It's always me or Naomi who's like, we'll leave, and then everyone else is like, we'll stay. <laughs> I Hello? love you. Why would I leave? I feel like I've had time on here. Hi, Jeff. How are you? My name is Jeff. Oh, wait, he's talking, quiet. but it's really low. Is my mic, like, not working well? Yeah. 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 I'm, like, really leaning yeah. in. I'll try to uh, bounce out and back in and see if that helps. Okay. This is a sickness. Y'all need Jesus. I sure don't. Do I get Jesus or do I get baby Jesus? Jesus. Jeffrey requested. Guys, is the live lagging since there's three of us? I wonder. It always does. Because we might need to you restart requests to. so her live doesn't look horrible. Oh, they said no. Hello? Yeah, I'm not sure if it helps, but uh, let me know. Uh, it was a little better. It's still pretty quiet, but we will live. What's your <laughs> take? Um, so, I mean, I would say generally I'm pretty pro-life. Um, I do kind of understand. See, like, I understand both sides, and I, I think it's kind of damaging when we, like, call, like, the opposite side. Like, because obviously, like, everybody has their opinion for good reason. Like, they truly believe these things, right? And I just think it's kind of damaging when we like tell each other like the opposite side like they don't make sense or like we try to like give other examples like you know try to like like okay say this happened like what would you do in this situation because i feel like it's just trying to like point out like oh well then it doesn't make sense you know according to your logic you know that type of argument because like for example like i generally would say like i'm pro-life i do understand though that like certain conditions occur where like you know like in the case of sexual assault you know i would feel terrible if like a woman did not want to proceed with pregnancy and she was forced to but at the same time i do understand why would you that... feel terrible for a woman just being forced to sustain a pregnancy say that one more time why wouldn't you feel bad for any woman being forced to sustain a pregnancy well it's because like this so like the people who are like strict about, about being pro-life like in any situation you know their argument is like well this is like a unique like it's a human like being whether or not you call it that at this stage or that stage it is has the you know capacity or potential down the line it you know can be that right so you know i do respect that opinion because they're placing such a high value on this thing growing inside of a woman and they consider it like maybe the 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 um maybe the start of it or like if it was essay or something you know maybe that wasn't so beautiful but it can t it, it has the potential to turn into something beautiful so i like respect <laughs> that idea like the way they're thinking at least like i but i also I'm trying to consider like all parties involved, which is why I would kind of like in my head give more lenience to that type of situation. But I get where they're coming from is all I'm trying to say. And, you know, I'm also saying like I get where you guys come from because okay. just okay. we all have different like understandings of like what's like maybe. Yeah. You know, before this, you know, these two cells merge and turn into something. Um, no, you're right. We do all have different understandings. That's why we're pro-choice, because you might understand that it's, like, valuable and it has this potential and that we should value the potential, but others do not value potential. So would you say that you right. are for criminalizing abortion, or do you just think it's bad? Um, I would say, like, I would definitely criminal. I would definitely be for criminalizing it at at a certain point you know 
I think Why? I know there's, you know, and there's always going to be like, you know, well, how about in the, you know, 1% of cases where like someone doesn't even know they're pregnant, you know, and then she finds out towards the end, you right. wouldn't be for, you know, that type of stuff always comes up, but it's like, we have to go with, you know, like the common sense, like, that's not like, that's well, not, not standard, common that's sense not. though, because Canada doesn't have any kind of regulation regarding abortion and they have a lower abortion rate than the United States. Well, I'm not even, I mean, my argument has nothing to do with, like, the race. Like, it's just. Well, it's just it's showing right that regulation doesn't, isn't correlated to rate. So I don't know why you would need that regulation. Well, it's just, it's just a matter of, like, you know, if something, if I see something bad happening in the world, um, just because it's not regulated doesn't mean I don't think it should have some sort of thing on the books so do you think adultery should be criminalized well no i don't isn't that something you would consider bad yeah it definitely is bad um however it's not it's not like killing something that is not you you know you might be affecting the other you know person in the relationship in a negative way or the family um, which is terrible, but it's not killing something. And, you know, mm -hmm. the difference is, like, between something growing inside a human being as opposed to something growing inside, like, a kangaroo is that humans are so much more complex, different, and have a much more um, broad impact on the world that we live in than any other species. So that's, like, kind of why I... So what would be your cutoff point? Okay. Yeah. Have it. yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, I mean, I'm interested to hear what the cutoff time is. The cutoff point? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say, like, once... I don't know. It, you guys would probably know more than me, like, where you could start seeing, like, okay, this is the sex of the child. Would you be okay if we establish the cutoff point at 24 weeks, which is viability, and then after that, women would have to do induced labor? How many weeks? 24 weeks, when the fetus gains consciousness and proper lung functions in viability. I think that's too long. Why? Um, Why? I just feel like it's it's already like turning into something that you can distinguish that is not you know like just a clump or like a fertilizer you know what i mean it's just you know yeah i understand like before what that the... it might not have brain activity that a normal um person well i mean a... up until that point if we were even to just remove them from the uterus they wouldn't survive that's true um however like I don't know if you guys, I mean, I know this isn't really happening, but they are researching it in, on different animals, and it could maybe in the next decade start ha occurring, but, um, you know, it might not be uh, that much longer before we could have um, the fetus be grown outside of the womb, you know, in a, in You're a right. hospital You're or something. Right. So, so until then, really... should we keep uh, it until viability, or what, like, what do we do up until that point? Can we keep abortions legal until we can have that means? Um, can we do it at viability? And what would be your standpoint if not viability? No, I don't think my I don't think I viability is in any consideration in my head. It's just more about um, I think everybody has a responsibility to like if once you you find out you're pregnant. Um, obviously, it's a huge decision and it takes time. But um, if you can't, like, pin that down in, like, a few months, then I just, I think it's just being a little bit irresponsible. And I know it's a pressing issue. But, well, I, mean, I don't, like, I, I think that could be a very privileged point of view because mm -hmm. would you be open then for abortions to be free? Um, yeah, as long as it's done and accessible and because that's typically what causes delays in when the pregnancy is terminated is that either it's not directly accessible so a person has to travel which comes with undue burden of expense and loss of work mm -hmm. 
or they so don't have like, the means what's necessarily. The average, I don't know the answer to this, but what's the average like um, point in time that an abortion occurs in the span of pregnancy? The first mm-hmm. trimester. 93% are done 13 weeks and prior. Yeah, I mean, I guess... So third, okay. So if uh, a developing fetus at thirteen, you said thirteen weeks, within that range. At thirteen weeks, what what does a fetus like resemble? What what's going on in the? See, yeah, and and this is the concern that I have is that you want to have this opinion, but you don't know very much. Well, I know I don't. I I said that in the beginning. I just right. you know. So I don't it's, know it's why you would have of... this opinion that regulation is necessary. Well, I think regulation is necessary because once you get to a certain point and... Do you this... not trust women? Not always. I'm not going to... I don't... And it's nothing about women. It's just I don't trust anybody um, just because I should. Do you think women are just waking up one day and you know, at 32 weeks pregnant and saying, well, shit, I forgot to have that abortion. No, not necessarily. I'm just saying that it could happen. Then what are you, like, proposing this legislation against? I just am trying to put forward responsibility. And I, I don't think that our society these days is very responsible. And I do think more has to be put into um, the How idea is that forcing someone to sustain pregnancy responsible. Well, I never said that. But that's what you're advocating for. I'm I'm advocating for responsible choices. So what, can I ask more something? More education yeah. needs to be put on the front of um, understanding that. When you have sure, sex I, I would agree with sex. that, which is why I do argue sexual health education K through 12, but um, mm-hmm. it, it's this legislation well, yeah, I, mean, I have an issue with. Well, I, mean, I, got a, I got a question. I got a question I for you guys. I got a question. Okay, you all hear me? Yep. I just want to know, like, when does a person get to decide if they want to be pregnant? Um, well, when you have sex, you just know that you know, the, the um, act of having sex, you know, um, that is a more than not, you know, it's more likely than not that if everything lines up as far as what's going on in the body, the time of the month and everything else and everything uh, functions normally as it should in the man and in the woman, that sex is a um, very high possibility. And I think that, like, we should understand that so people are more cautious with their choices and obviously I know that sex is also a recreational activity however the biological function of sex is to reproduce and I feel like sometimes like saying that it just like makes people crazy and I just don't understand why because that is how it is in every mammalian because you are correct sex has more than just biological purposes it's also for psychological and social and to simply say that you shouldn't do this because you could get pregnant is very dehumanizing. Well, that also didn't. Well, it's but I mean, fully like, so answer like, my okay, question. I could, I could go take a bath for pleasure, but like, really, what I'm doing it for is to like clean the dirt off my. Body what people absolutely take baths thing. just just to enjoy baths. What are you talking about? Yeah. I understand that, but that's not why people you know pull out the shampoo and the body wash and everything else. You know. So why do I get into a hot tub? I, I didn't say going in a jacuzzi. I said... That's the same baby. thing, though. It's not, because one's for cleaning and one's for... Like, right, but pleasure. people who get abortions didn't have the intent of getting pregnant. Um, I will tell you, I have never had sex with the intention of getting pregnant. No, that, yeah, I mean, I understand that occurs, obviously, but I'm just saying that, well, it's actually more predominant. you know, while you're having sex, when the, you know, when <laughs> the genitalia meet, that this is, especially when you don't use protection, that this. Well, is, 51% is of abortions are due to failed contraceptives. Result. Right. But you, 
what I'm just saying is I understand that sometimes you don't want to have uh, sex to get pregnant, and sometimes you do, whatever. I would say most but, of the time. Yeah, well, everyone's different. Um, what about you? you know, what, so. about you? what percentage of sex would you say you had the intent of getting someone pregnant? Well, honestly, uh, I think the answer is different now than it might have been a few years ago, because I honestly don't even know if I want to have a child to grow up in the environment that I'm, you know, seeing these days, so pleasure. So do you have kids? No, I don't. So how many times have you had sex to get someone pregnant? Um, never. Yeah, never. So yeah, that I would argue that sex is actually in within the human species. Uh, more for social and psychological purposes and that outweighs the biological risks. Well, I already, yeah, I already said that, you know, that is definitely, I agree with you. I'm just saying that we know that when you engage in this, that the result could be pregnancy. And that, that is I true. Like but I don't know why women should be forced to sustain pregnancy. I mean, why, why should pregnancy be a punishment? Well, because all human life is kind of sacred and individual and precious and killing is wrong, I guess, is the argument. Um, and all okay with all abortions, human life? However, when, um, you know, it's done in a responsible time frame, you know, it's it's still like it's sad right, you and such. Like, you know? can, can you quantify that? Because you you give exceptions for sexual assault. Is that human life not valuable? Well, that's why I'm saying like I understand the like very very strict um, stance of pro life, where they say like, you know, like the the counter argument to them a pro choicer would be saying you know. How can you allow like a woman to have to follow through with the pregnancy if she was assaulted? And and they say because it's not it's not the child's fault or the fetus's fault, and they deserve a chance at life. This you know their the actions of another party shouldn't in you know fringe on their right to life. And, okay. You know, there are examples. So of, my um, argument for abortion is that I feel based on my knowledge that the only purpose abortion bans serve is to subjugate and oppress women. And I take issue with that. To oppress women? Yeah. It, you're saying a, like a, a very strict pro-lifers purpose on I think any restriction this. regarding abortion is to oppress and subjugate women, pregnant persons, non-binaries, trans men. So you don't buy their argument of just trying to preserve life? As a, You just think it's to if subjugate women? If that is the common goal, I think we can come up with other solutions. Well, I'm just confused. Like, do, why do you believe that these people want to make it illegal? You think it, you're saying you think it's because they want to subjugate women? Like, do you think that's actually what's going on in their head, or that they actually believe that? Am I, they do don't I think they're kill? conscious of it? No, I think they're so myopically focused that they are ignorant to it. But um, I think there's. But that's a lot all of I'm saying is I feel like it's dangerous to like. And we'll, and people are never going to agree on everything in the world. People are always going to be in wars. People are always going to, you know, hate um, certain ideas. And but I don't, I don't disrespect like either side because it's really there's. Why no, is I mean, that yeah, of course, like because you're insinuating that because someone, you know, like I, I'm trying to place myself in each side's shoes, and I see that the pro-life side has good intentions they value life no matter what stage it's at they see this as a human developing they don't want to cut that possibility of a potential happy fulfilled um impactful life on society 
on family, whatever the case may be. I get that. Yeah. And I'm not going to criticize it because I that is a beautiful idea. You think maybe you're, you're, you're including more parties, though. You're including, you know, the mother who's impacted by this, who doesn't want the pregnancy to continue. Um, and that's also, like, very insightful and very um, good of you. So I'm just saying that I understand both sides. Well, I, and I, feel I think like... pro-life people really cared that they would do other things. Uh, they would so... advocate for free and affordable health care. They would advocate for free daycare. They would advocate for paternity leave, for maternity leave. They would advocate for free contraceptives. Mm -hmm. uh, they would advocate for adoption reform. Well, those are... They don't. Those are different discussions, though. I mean, you could put a, de a debate together saying, so, if you are for, if you are pro-life, let's discuss or debate what comes after. That's fine, but that's or not before. what your debate's about. They're, they're not, because right. they're but not. The, the way it. these debates are set up, like, you know, I just got TikTok recently, but I think, um, like, I keep seeing these, like, I don't know, I'm sure it has something to do with, like, what I've watched, and then it just keeps showing me yeah. the same things yeah. over and over again. However, I just feel like these are very circular, and just, like, nobody's going to reach across the other side, and that's really the only way to, like, I mean, everybody has to understand the other side, you know? Yeah, and I agree. You have to agree. But so I just see that lacking so much, you know? I have, like, I'm here on this, like, virtual chat, right? And I don't know any of you people. Which is fine. I'm here doing it, and it's fun. However, um, I live in Chicago, right? And most of the people out here are not, they don't have the same beliefs that I do. However, I still get along great with them. I have made friends that are nothing like me. And I just do not approach um, disagreements the way that I see on these, like, um, social apps. And I just think it's kind of sad because we have to understand each other in this world. And I just think it's just totally lacking. I don't have to agree with you. I, I'm, I am all not about bothered, I'm not bothered by people who don't agree with me. But when I see that someone like wants to cut me off or like put me down because I can't. And I'm not saying that's what's happening right now. But I'm just saying we need more like, you know, we don't have to always talk about these hot button issues as if it's life and death even though that's literally what this one's actually about however um you know like there's more to everybody than just their political stances on all these things out there and i just think it's kind of sad because this is not i mean you know i'm not saying like, i want to go back to the 1940s where there were all these issues or 60s or whatever um all these other issues in our society however I think it would be healthy if we stopped talking about politics and, you know, stances yeah. on everything, right? Is all I'm saying. Are Are you a cisgendered white man? Uh, I mean, what does that matter? <laughs> because your opinion seems very privileged. How? I'm actually pretty curious how it sounds privileged. Because you're essentially saying that we should avoid disagreement. No, I'm not saying that. You... That's not what I said. I'm sorry. Could you sum up what you said? Maybe I misunderstand. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is we have record, to... are you... What was that? Are, are you a cisgendered white man? Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> okay. Um. What I'm saying is we have to be okay with each other's differences. Why would I be okay with people having an opinion that would oppress me? Because, because we have more in common, perhaps, if you were to bounce, you know, outside of these boundaries, then we have you know if you just like kind of reach outside of these like scopes there's a lot more to us that we could get along on nobody's trying to like 
Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some bad people out there. However, do you really think as a whole people are trying to like oppress you still to this day? Yes. And I think that you even have some ingrained misogyny that you might not be aware of. Such as? The things that you have been talking about. I mean, you're essentially saying that we should take politics out of a lot of our conversations. And as a cisgendered white man, I think that's beneficial for you because we are in a system that has benefited you the most. Where if okay, you had an so... identity to where the system did not benefit you in the way it has, I think you would be positioning yourself very differently. No, because that's not true. Just because I'm white and, um, and a man. cis... And yes. male, do you think you you do you think you really understand all the stuff I've gone through, and that I you think I'm a like not on an individual that level I, I, that I don't have anything that, that you have people been a part of a system that benefits you more than others, and that has influenced your view of the world. Absolutely. Okay. Well, what about the other cis white male that I'm friends with, that thinks exact opposite of me? I mean that that's like literally that. That doesn't make sense. If you grew up with Nazis, do you think most likely you would be a Nazi? Um, I'm sure there's, there's an impact there. Yeah. So that's what I'm highlighting is that I feel the things that you have said show me that your point of view it's from a cisgendered white man who has lived in a system and society that has benefited well, I'm him. I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't agree with anything you just said. Um, my, my parents taught me to love, respect everybody that um, is around me, respect all opinions. I mean, the ones within bounds of um, morality and such. However, uh, yeah, none of that's true. So. I'm sitting here talking to you, being civil and nice and respectful, and I value your okay, opinion. I'm not because... saying you aren't. Yeah, but you're saying because, see, and this is the other problem that, like, I feel like it's causing more harm than good at this point. Yes, I'm for, like, lifting up people who are oppressed, people who aren't like me, who had it tough, you know, different races, different backgrounds, different sexualities. However, when you focus on um the bad instead of the progress it will never improve and when you keep separating people out because of their skin color which is what you literally just did do you ever think this will stop because i'm trying to talk about how we can come together and you just brought up my race i did and pretty much made we don't think that, that I, because I'm I, white, debate, I debate intersectional because, feminism and that's i fine can admit that as a white woman, we have taken advantage of a lot of female progress at the expense of fellow women who are people of color. Yeah, I can acknowledge that's, that. That's, and if I acknowledge that, acknowledge. I can also be a part of the change. So yes, I acknowledge that I too, as a white person, benefit from the system as it currently that's, is. That's fine, but I don't do things that way. The way I do things is that everybody is equal and I don't pay attention to skin but color. But that's not I reality. I pay attention to moving forward. Well, it that's can not be, reality. but you we'll do never not get there. in a world where everybody is equal. Well, the only way to get to that point, which is the end goal, correct, is to stop separating It's not people. to act like that that is the case now. No, it's not. There has to be things I... that happen to reach that goal. Um, I and this is where I would now. turn over the mic to Naomi. Naomi, I don't know. Are you muted? I don't I can't hear you. Um, cause Naomi is a person of color. So this is where I would turn the mic over to her for her to talk about that. So, um, is she the, uh, maid or... oh, I feel like I heard you. <laughs> Naomi? Hello. Oh. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, I had a customer. Okay. Yeah, I had to mute. Were we talking about me? Um, we were talking about 
equality in America. And he said he wants to treat everyone as if they're equal already. And I said that we're not, so that doesn't work. And then I uh, wanted to turn the mic over to someone who actually is a person of color and experiences the Yeah, system. I would say you can try and treat everybody like they're equal, but you can't um, ignore the fact that we're not all equal. So it's kind of like starting me at the very back of the finish line and then starting somebody else like three meters ahead of me and then acting like we're equal, even though in fact we're not. It's actually more damaging than it is good. Okay, but what, what, what did I say that um promulgated that belief that what uh, did I, I say that was doing that i have no idea i was uh, with a customer i'm sorry you just said you treat people like they're equal and that we should just treat people like they're equal but they're not okay so so let me ask you this my uh my friend grew up in new york state his um little brother who still lives there Mm -hmm. in elementary school and they started separating the uh class in elementary school for certain activities like so that they can only hang out with others in the same race that they're in do you think that's healthy i think that's that very strange thing. yeah well that is happening all over the place yeah and, but that's not what we're arguing and, for well well, that's what I'm trying to say is we need to – because that's just an example of separating people by their background in the name of, like, equality. While it may be good intention, you know, it's it's really quite damaging. And I think yeah, that's so I don't, I don't, I don't argue for segregation. I am just arguing for equal rights. So you have to, yeah, although we want everybody to be equal, not everybody is equal. So we have to understand that when dealing with others, because you can't just say, oh, I want everybody to be equal and then disregard the well, fact that we're not. Well, I, I'd never, I never said that we were all treated equally. I said we should treat all, all you know, people equally. Yeah, I don't know what like, you said. Sorry, I was with a customer. I'm not but... sure if she's acting as if, you know, I'm like some sort of oppressor here. No, I just said that your opinion is congruent with what opinion I would normally encounter with a cisgendered white man. You really, so that I think is very like problematic too, because you really think the opinion I just laid out to you is not shared by like a black female or an Indian female or an Indian gay male or an Asian. What, that um... we should just not talk politics when it comes to stuff like that? Yeah, I think a lot of people who are oppressed or people of color you're, want to have these conversations my opinion, because it affects them. You're, my, you're saying my opinion sounds like a white male's opinion. That is, that's, that is not true there are so many well, backgrounds and cultures that would say why, why does this offend you that i say your point of view is privileged because you are dividing that's a problem i'm trying to treat all people equally that is and how are you doing that <laughs> like how do you actively by, do that by treating all people the same and right but how do, that? how do you do that that's not okay. necessarily what the topic I mean, is about um and i think this is where a good definitional check could come into it. It's not necessarily about treating people the same. There's a difference between equality and equity. Because if you think about three people looking over a fence to see a baseball game, one person is tall, who can see above the fence, one person is medium height, who can't see above the fence, and the other person is short, who was nowhere see near seeing the event um, over the fence. If we were to give each of them a box, therefore treating them equally, the tall person didn't even need the box, and now they can just see more. The middle person, now they can see over the fence, but the short person, the box isn't high enough, so they still can't even see the game. So while we treated them equally, they didn't have the same outcome. Okay, to where if we okay. didn't give the box to the tall person, they can still see the game. If we gave one box to the middle person, they can see the game. But now we give two boxes to the short person, now they can see the game too. So now three people, even though they weren't treated equally, they had the same outcome. 
Okay, and so that's can you give me like a, a, a real life example as opposed to seeing over a fence for a baseball game? Well, I would like, talk about what, reparations. What was it? Um, reparations? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and this is where I feel that I should really promote people of color because again, me being a white woman who might not have, who really hasn't experienced much uh, racial discrimination, I don't know if I can really give you a proper picture of what they are experiencing. Well, I understand that they're not experiencing the same things as us or as you. So that's that's what I mean. That's what these people, what not these people, that's what people want to have in terms of conversations. This is what, um, why knowing the difference between equality and equity is really important, especially in a society that is so not not balanced. Right. And so and, and I disagree it's, with you that we should country try either. and this all get a... along and not talk about these things because it doesn't it does more harm, just as Naomi said, than it does good. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> I just believe that, yeah, there are, like you were saying, you know, you have to start like in third place or whatever type of thing. I understand that's a thing. Um, but I think when you put this hyper focus on it and as opposed to just like picking that individual up and placing them here instead, like, well, if you're, you know, third in line, we'll, we'll just put you ahead, you know, and it's just almost like manu like it's just ma manufacturing like a um, solution that isn't actually real. And the only way to actually make it real is to teach people to love each other, no matter who you are and what you look like. Yeah, so do you think, so So when we do teach people to do- Part of a big picture. But I'm sorry, Nini, go ahead. That's Maybe. one part of the big picture. Just learning to, to hold yeah. hands, sing kumbaya and love each other is not the solution. Go ahead, Naomi. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Like, for example, I mean, let me think of something that I just... And now I have a customer. Like... Oh, that's okay. Um, Hola, buenas. Get... Dame un momento. Naomi, you're not muted. Okay. <laughs> Um, like for example, um, what did they do? Uh, was it the, uh, do you mind if I add someone else? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. All right, go ahead, Jeff. <clears throat> You there? I don't yeah, think okay. so. Can you hear me? Um, can you can you speak again? You sounded better at the end. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're very muffled. Is this better? No. <laughs> uh. Okay, does this work better? So much better. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just have a question for Jeff. Um, do you like do you have an understanding of like what privilege is? I do. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. So but, oh is it, uh, I'm sorry, what is your name? My name is Natalie. Uh, the, the King Lady is a performance name. Um, I am an Afro-Latina woman. And then Cosmazing, what, what is your name? Oh, Callie. Okay, so Natalie and Callie. Okay, go ahead, Callie. 
Um, so it's not about separating people necessarily. It's about understanding that you don't face issues that other people do. So like, for example, you walking into a store, you're not being watched necessarily, whereas a person of color may be. Or it's not like, it's not taking your struggles away. It's just highlighting struggles that other people have um, that you don't even have to worry about because it's not even an, an issue for you at all. No, I'm aware no, of I'm... it. Okay, because it seems like you're just kind of like sugarcoating everything. Like the first step to kind of equalizing things is realizing that there is um a difference in power and that privilege does exist do you know what i mean i'm fully aware that that's all there and i know it's a problem i just think that the way we're trying to fix it is making it worse that's what i'm saying okay can i say something sorry cool no go ahead okay jeff here's the thing what you're saying, the reason why we're saying it's it comes from a privileged place is because um, it's very privileged, sorry, it's privileged to say, I think it should be handled this way or it shouldn't be handled this way when you are not the one constantly having to feel this oppression. So for you to say what divides and what doesn't divide when back in the days when there was not a discussion, it benefited you. Now that there is a discussion, you cannot say, or you should, it should not be your place to say, I don't think this is working. It's dividing us, okay. sir. That's, that's, like back in the day, it wasn't dividing us because we couldn't say anything about it. So you were comfortable. Well, true. No, that, I mean, that right. makes sense. But, but what I would say to that is, Okay, so you're saying, like, I never experienced that, right? So I got to live my life without feeling any of those things. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, portray to you that I am in that position that you would probably aspire to be in, right? Where, like, you don't have to ever feel those types of things. This is what it's like. I'm trying to tell you what it's like to not have to deal with that. This is how people that don't go through any of that approach life, right? We don't see Okay. That. We're in a position of power and privilege, and I should listen to you. You know how long I've had to listen no. to you? How about you listen to us? I wasn't saying that I'm in power. I'm just saying I don't feel the same. See, like, you that's are. the problem is, like, you're calling me, like, trying to put you are. Like, you, you no, I'm saying in general, power. Jeff. I'm sorry. I don't mean you, you. I'm saying, like, in general. Well, I'm just trying well, to say, trying like, to... you know, you, the things you would – not want to experience in the life the struggles that you have that I don't have the way we move forward is to start acting this way towards one another and I just see a lot of division I mean can we all agree that there's a lot of division right now at least right I mean I would say even more so than 15, I think there's years ago, always been kid. division it just hasn't we just quiet well, there's, there's, there's um, always going to be division, however, but I think the way to, you know, minimize that is to be more, um, you know, in the sphere of treating each other just based on their character and not dividing, which I just see a lot more of. Yeah. Okay. okay. Again, Again, what you're saying sounds lovely, but one, the reason why you're seeing more division is because the people that are oppressed are being able to speak out, which they weren't before. So there was no discussion to have before because we were quiet. We had to be to survive. Number two, you're still in a, in a, in a place of more power than let's say me a woman of color, you're still, even though you're like, yeah, we want to be equal, you're still telling me how I should handle it. That's still a place of power. You're still telling us how no, you I'm think we, hold on, hold on. You're still telling us how you think we should handle the situation, how you will be more comfortable. There, there shouldn't be a discussion. You are still speaking from a place of power as opposed to, you know what? I wouldn't argue, but it's not my place to tell the rest of society, how to handle things. That is what should be done. Not, I think I mean, that you guys should do this. You're still speaking from a place of power when you put in your input 
and you expect people to react this way because you're uncomfortable. Hey, I just want to let everyone it. know. I just want to let everyone know that the chat is saying there's an echo. Um, right. So if everyone could just hit the interlocking circles and turn their mic off and then turn it back on. That it may stop okay. it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wait, what do I hear? You see the pink and blue interlocking circles at the bottom? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Your, your uh, cool. mic's a little bit now loud, Natalie. And Jeff, yours is super quiet. Um, okay, mine is too loud. How about now? Um, it's still, I mean, you, you have a great headset. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't even have a headset on. It's the. It's my phone. Okay, go go ahead, Jeff. Sorry, I just wanted to. The chat was saying that, so I just wanted to address mm -hmm. that echo. Um, I mean, I don't really. I don't know where I said that. We. Um, I'm not listening to anyone else's like way of moving forward. Um, but you're you're assuming that everybody that is like you agrees with you too. Jeff, do you think you're like privileged? That all, black, that all black people like think the same way, or all you know, Asians think. The you same know, way. you. I don't assume that. I know that not all black women think the same way I do. However, I. It's been part of my experience um, that some, not all, but a high percentage of those people that don't agree are people that have gotten used to performing for the white man and they are still having to disentangle that part of colonization that has instructed us on how to behave. Jeff, do you have a headset or, or earbuds? Because everyone's saying it, it's your mic. I don't know if you want to oh. drop and then re-request. Okay, sure. Thank you. I'm sorry, audio is so off the bottom on TikTok. Yeah, that's just an observation, Jeff, that I've done. Um, it's not a 100% accurate thing. I know that. But it's a high percentage of people of color that think this way. And in uh, the same idea that they have of you, they have other ideologies that also are very much empowered by not being able to decolonize their themselves. And I, I feel that that was my issue with your stance on that I should reach across the aisle to pro-lifers to understand their point of view and have compassion. Um, like, I, I really resent that I have to pander or cater to them because while I don't experience oppression or subjugation on the level of my peers, um, it is still there for my gender. And yeah. Oh, I forgot. And like as a woman, back in here. Uh, as, as, a, as a woman, it doesn't, you don't have to be a, a woman of color, but you as a woman can see, um, he's essentially telling you to reach over to a side that has an opinion <laughs> while that wow. opinion hinders on your rights of survival as a human being. Right. So it's very easy to say, why can't you just get along when your rights are not being, you know, in danger, where your exactly. quality of life is not in danger. It's very easy to say, oh, guys, chill. And I'm like, I'm literally yeah, fighting yeah. here to. Simply said what I was like taking eons to get to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's it's so easy to say guys, let's all be peaceful, yet I can't, I can't choose over my body. You're not letting me. Right, right. You want to implement laws that would literally oppress and subjugate women. I mean, even if we look at the history of abortion, it was made illegal in 1867 because women were gaining political power and men saw it as a very easy way to essentially maternalize them, get them back in the home, get them out of politics so that they could stay in power. So yes, that's mm -hmm. why I take issue with people who have that point of view. Well, and I think and, also and like-, like I've, I've been wanting to, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think like saying that you don't see color 
with people is, I mean, that's an issue in itself because you're not recognizing the difference in privilege. Yeah. I, like, I'm going to tell you something. I'm the first, one of the first things that I notice of somebody is their color. And I purposely do it. And it's not to put them in a box, but I, I need to know and understand that. And, and it's not just like people that I don't know. I do it with my own family members. I am, like I said, I'm Afro-Latina. My family is black. However, my daughter is very white passing. Very, very white. My niece is black. So I know when I'm out in the street, I know one is going to be treated differently and it happens instantly. They go to my daughter and they tell her how beautiful her hair is and they don't turn around and do the same for my niece. I know it. So I'm very, I have to be aware at all times that these two are different. These two will be treated different no matter what. Yeah, because I mean, just not acknowledging and saying like, oh, I don't see color. I mean, you're just avoiding the, the issue, in my opinion. Okay, well, I know it's it's quite obvious that everybody's different and everybody's a different color. I'm just saying we should treat each other like we would ourselves or our own. We should. Yeah, we should. And I think that's the end game, essentially. But before we do that, we have to get uncomfortable. We have to be uncomfortable before we do that. Well, I think we've been on top of this for a while. I mean, not necessarily me, but, you know. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to have to keep going at it until we can get to a place where everybody is treated equally. You know what I mean? Like, okay, it's frustrating. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But we have to continue to get uncomfortable until I have bodily autonomy until I have rights over my body until I'm not paid less than my male counterparts until my my skin color is no issue until I can wear my hair any type of way that I want to in the workplace and I can go on and on and on and on until those things legally happen then we can turn into society and say hey guys come on let's hold hands and sing kumbaya it's time until then let's be uncomfortable if you want POC people or women to hold your hand while doing so we can we will okay cool but you got to know we're gonna have to be uncomfortable it's gonna be a bumpy ride until we get to the peaceful place like I, I think especially for um you know cisgendered white men like I don't know if you guys will really like the changes because we will move away from a society that inherently benefits you Jess, can I just give you one piece of literature? It's only like two pages long, but it's very impactful. Working out. Sorry. I don't know if your phone's like far away from your mouth or <laughs> or what, because I know sometimes like earbuds, you think the mic in the earbud is working, but TikTok doesn't, it just uses the headphone I, and not the microphone. I can hear like lips, like, like, you know, when your lips push together to form a sound, like I can hear that, but I can't know what he's saying. Oh, okay. I really don't know. I tried putting um, buds in and just without, but if it's not coming through, I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, you can send me. Well, I'll just actually, I'll just tell you, it's just called White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack by Peggy McIntosh. And it's, it's just, it's not even like, it's, it's just easy to digest. So, and I think it would be very impactful for you to just read over. All right, I see it. Um, I'll read it. Yeah, for sure. I, I know it exists. I'm not saying it doesn't. I just, I just. I just don't like what I'm seeing. I feel like people are just getting further apart. And I well, don't like that. As you should, I, I don't think you should like what you're seeing because like I said, yeah. <laughs> the society that you benefit from is going to change. Yeah, and you keep, see, it's like you're trying to like, it's like you're trying to push me to be upset or something. I, I, I'm poor yeah. what you guys are for. I'm not saying I you. I don't need to be upset. Well, it's like you say something like, you know, you should worry because you're going to the world that, you know, is going to come to be is not going to benefit you anymore. You know, as if like I should be alarmed and fight back against it or something. I'm literally no. saying that I want the same thing as you. I just don't I just don't necessarily agree in the same way that you do as to how to get there. 
we literally want the same thing. Well, the first thing I think is using your privilege for good. So giving people that are disadvantaged a platform, you know, so well, using your privilege to allow right them now? to pardon. Right. But I'm doing that. Like <laughs> you're not doing that. I'm doing that. <laughs> well, I'm participating. You are. But did you notice that when we started talking about POC issues that I tried to turn it over to POCs? I, like, I don't know why you're, I, I felt that you got offended when I asked you, are you a cisgendered white male? And then I said, that makes sense because I feel you have the opinion of a cisgendered white male. I mean, the reason I w was a little, um, quite honestly, like, thought it was kind of weird to say is because that doesn't mean I don't get an opinion. It oh, not at all. Right, but you made it seem like because lens. this is who I am, my opinion means not quite, you know, it means Jack at the end of the day. I think not necessarily. To your opinion and your lens from what the things you were saying to me is indicative of the position that you hold in society. I, I will admit, I do not I have the same opinion. The, I don't as, see color shit. You want to know how many different so, opinions exist in my sphere, in my cis white male circle? How many different opinions we all have? That literally okay. would be even more extreme, you know, on the side of you. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Are you acknowledging or are you denying the fact that you probably have an opinion that is privileged? What I'm saying is thoughts are diverse, no matter what you look like. That's and you are not, trying to, it's like you're just that. playing identity um, politics. And that is so, so divisive. And that's what I want to move away from. I'm not saying like you're doing it. I'm not saying identity politics. I'm saying that I think there are experiences that you haven't had in life. And yet you want to have these solutions or ideas to solve okay. these experiences that so, you do have. Like, so with let, me the example, let me, let me just finish and then you can talk. I'm, I'm not here to bully you or overshadow your, your voice. Like you, the opinion that you had when it came to regulation regarding pregnancy, there was a lot that you didn't know. And yet you so, have this opinion that there should be regulation during pregnancy. And I think so, you are limited in what you can see because of your position in society. That's what I'm saying. If you allow me, uh, Kenzie, let me put it on another way, because I think that is a very natural thing for human beings to be reactive and defensive whenever we feel like we're being pointed out. Okay. We're not pointing you out in general, Jeff. It, this, I mean, sorry, we're not pointing you out. It is a general term. As a white cis man, um, you have certain privileges. We are all uh, the result of our environment. And your environment has given you a sense of entitlement, whether you want it or not. So that's going to cloud certain opinions that you have in the same way that Kenzie might have a certain opinion as a white woman. However, the, the part where you and Kenzie differ is that she is aware of those things. She doesn't fight them. She doesn't get defensive. She doesn't get offended. She does, she, what she does is allow somebody else that is a person of color to have the floor because she understands my limits are here. I do not have the right to have an opinion about situations uh, of, or issues regarding people of color, because I am not. In the same sense that me, as a woman of color, I cannot have an opinion about situations regarding trans issues, because I am a cis woman. So there are certain things I cannot say to the cis community, well, you know what, I, I just feel like the way you guys are going about, no. I have to give the floor to a trans person, because I know that I have the privilege of being treated the same gender I was born with and never having that being questioned. Those are the things that we're talking about. We're not saying that your opinion is not valid. We're saying that when we're talking about something 
that has always benefited you, it's best to give the floor to the person that is being oppressed and not tell the person that is being oppressed how they should handle it. Well, well, Tansy understands that. You know, she did it perfectly. Oh, thank you. However, um, it, it's still hard to hear you, but I don't know if you can yell. <laughs> I, I, I have to leave. I have to leave, but I'll leave you with this. Um, you, you guys assume that just based on like our short conversation that you know I am not oppressed. There are parts of me that are oppressed, and of I, I don't have to share them. However, as someone who is in a category of being oppressed over time, I welcome all perspectives. And just because you're not like me, I want to hear from you. And I think that's a good thing. If you don't, that's okay. We can continue on that you know, path that you would like to go on. I just believe that the way to come together is for us all to think and, and come to um, ideas together in the same room as opposed to different sides and being tribal. And, you know, it's okay to disagree, um, but that's all I got to say. I hope you guys have a good one. I know. And okay, just you too, Jeff. I want to say quit saying things and start listening. That would be my advice. Okay, well, I am listening, which is why I'm about to leave and read this article. So, again, I feel like you just try to, like, make people upset. And I don't know if that's your intention. I Perhaps it's not. However, I do think you. No, I just. Um, I, I mean, you're right. I, I do call just, bullshit when I when I hear bullshit. So I mean, you are correct. All right. That. Well, that's fine. I mean, I don't, you know, we don't have to agree. I I came here because I wanted to hear from everybody. Um, if you think it's bullshit, then it's bullshit it's to you. But um, I just I, I think, think you're. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I just think that you're not understanding, like, of course, everyone struggles with things and everyone has some type of oppression. But as a cis white male, you are in a very good position. And there are things that you wouldn't even think of that people have to deal with, like walking in the dark. You That's not an issue for you, right? Like walking, uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, being interrupted because males, white males typically aren't interrupted in conversation plenty <laughs> well i'm i'm saying in general no i understand but guess what i go through things that you don't and you go through things that i don't and the next person's story is completely different no i know totally that's different. but that's kind of not as opposed to acting like my life you know my the things i go through just don't amount to anything so you yeah you but the things you go through are never going to be because you're white or a male exactly. they're just going to be because you're a human that. being and it's it's turning into see this is the problem it's turned into my race the entire time and we can't even get to the heart of the subject how do we fix it and it what examples do we fix it? we haven't you even gotten there because you guys can't rest on race and that's you why are in a society that benefits you simply for being a white cisgender well, let's male. move past it how many times have i said that i agree with you Okay, so do you know how we move past it? That's and what I wanted you, to talk about, but we've been sitting here about in circles for 30 minutes about how I'm white. And it's just like, I get it. I get I'm privileged. I get I need to unpack it. I get that I should, can do more. Let's talk about what we can do, you know? And we can't even get there because you just keep talking about how my, you know, skin color is just, you know, impeding on my ability to be a part of the conversation and to be an active participant in trying to fix this. But I can't- I love how you're focusing on skin color. color all the while the person that's hosting this is also white and she's not pressed about being white. I'm just well, saying. She brought it up. She brought it up because I'm not just white. Right. I mean, are, are you telling me I'm being racist to you? We're the same race, dude. <clears throat> I, I didn't say that. I'm saying you are very focused mm -hmm. on it. However, I right. have to go because I have to go back to work. But I would hope that um, once I leave, you guys can talk about how to solve it beyond just bringing up people's skin color as opposed, you know, as related to how they should and shouldn't be a participant in that discussion. But have a great night. Take care. Nice all right. You all. Cool, cool. Take care, Jeff. Take care, Jeff. You too. Bye. Well, anyways. <laughs> hmm. I'm not new button. <laughs> Uh, I just I you know it's the typical like some people when they 